Do not mistake the title of this video. This is not your fast track to success in life, but understand that people tend to get what they deserve. Success requires effort, determination, and perseverance. Let's talk about how to achieve anything. Welcome to another episode of Money Matters. We've all been taught the mantra, study hard at school, get good grades, get a good job, earn good money, and live a good life. There's nothing particularly wrong with this. The human species needs guidance and leadership. It's not just about following our dreams. Many people don't even know what we want. Absolute freedom can lead to apathy, a sense of being lost and a sense of living from one day to the next without any direction. In the past, in times of desperate need, survival kept us on our toes and kept us busy. There was no time for apathetic meandering. There was a job to do. People's backs were up against the wall and there were mouths to feed. Today, for many of us at least, life is largely carefree. We do what we want, when we want, how we want. Some get into building their careers, climbing the corporate ladder, or building their businesses. Others are focused on parenthood, with a sense of duty and care to raise their children to give them the best opportunities possible. Others want to change the world for a better place and want to make an impact on this world. But many are just meandering. I said earlier that people tend to get what they deserve, meaning they have a good chance of achieving what they want if they really, really want it. Because if they truly want to achieve their goal, they will put the requisite effort to do so. This is where the raw motivation comes from. But before that comes the vision of what that goal means to them. Let's keep things simple. If a child really wants a particular toy for Christmas, they would have some foundation behind that want. They would have thought about playing with it, showing it to their friends, and any other number of ideas in their mind. Therefore, it starts with a dream a vision, a sense of ownership. We can apply this to Olympians also. They would have thought about the glory of winning the competition, standing up on the podium and having the gold medal put around their neck, and the pride their parents would have in their success. They need this vision to build the raw motivation that will fuel their desire to take action. Gold medals are not won on the big day. They are won on those gruelling days of training when all they want to do is rest and their bodies say stop. But they visualize the end goal and they push and push and never give up. And that's why discipline alone has no power. They need that vision to fuel the action and to ensure enduring action when there are a million reasons to quit. That child is reminded that they must remain disciplined in their actions to make their dream toy come to life this Christmas. The Olympian is reminded that they must remain disciplined in their training to increase their chances of tasting gold in the next Olympics. Discipline is attached to both a positive motivation, that vision of success, and arguably more motivating, a negative motivation, how it would feel if the Olympian did not get on the podium in the next Olympics. Fear is a strong motivator, but living in fear alone is not a great way to live and can lead to them running away from the problem. They need a blend of both positive and negative motivation. The balance between the two is dependent on the person. But what action do we take? Well, you've heard of this before. Goals need to be smart, meaning specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Let's go back to the example of the child and his Christmas toy. If their goal was to be a good boy or girl, that is not a smart goal. If their goal is to learn the times tables up to 12 before Christmas, this is much better. It's totally specific, measurable in that they can recite it, achievable assuming their age, relevant to their uh, mathematics at school, and time bound within a set date. It may be that they need to break it down into smaller monthly goals and track progress along the way. What may seem like the equivalent of climbing Everest can be broken down into less daunting sections to alleviate pressure. 
So far, so good. But what am I getting at here? Many of us will listen to this and think, yeah, yeah, I know this already. However, many of us also fail to execute these steps and many fail to even engage in step one, that's having a dream or vision in the first place. How many people count the days running up to the weekend? Happy Friday, right? Then Monday comes along and the week starts all over again. We come along to the new year and out of a sense of tradition, we come up with a half-hearted New Year's resolution. I want to get in shape this year. I want to have a dry January. I want, I want, I want. Okay, fair enough, but yawn. And why? Getting out of the gates in the right way is arguably the most important step. It comes back to ensuring you have enough fuel to ensure enduring action, to ensure you don't give up, and to maximize the chances of success at the end of it all. And is it a want or is it a need? And no, simply changing you want to you need won't increase your chances of success. Why is it important to you? What pleasure will you get out of it? How would it feel if you don't succeed? And, how, uh, and what are you willing to do to succeed? I come back to my earlier point, people tend to get what they deserve. You need to come up with your own goals. No one else can tell you whether out of selfish desires or whether out of a sense of duty for others, goals are a personal thing to us. In fact, some motivations are not even known to their owners. That's how obsessive behavior can arise. Yet, we may not be aware of them or be able to articulate them. We all have our little behavioral quirks. All that I've said thus far totally applies to the way we manage our finances. And whilst I've said before that wealth is by far not the most important thing in life, money, whether we like it or not, is intrinsically linked to almost every aspect of our life. It dictates the way we live, controls our time, regulates our freedom, and opens doors for us. I've seen far too many people live hand to mouth, month to month, and I'm not referring to those living in poverty. Far from it, in fact. You see, the world has plenty of ways we can spend our money. That's just capitalism and consumerism. What do you think Christmas is really about? You cannot earn more than you can spend. That's not possible. Some, fru some frugality is needed, but I digress. The point is, in order to take back control of our time, to increase our freedom, and to give ourselves more options later in life, financial planning and wealth management is needed. Goals are needed. Big picture life goals. Ones that really matter ones that are really meaningful to us. We need a positive and negative motivation. We need a clear vision of achieving these goals. It requires discipline. We need to be reminded of our vision. We need enduring action to see it through to the end. We need smart goals broken down into bite-sized chunks and track our progress. I don't understand why people say they want to make gains or profit from the financial markets. It's such a stupid statement. It sounds like a New Year's resolution to me. It comes back to why. Specifically, why does building your wealth matter to you? And how will it improve your life? Can you visualize it? Can you taste it? How much do you want it? And what are you willing to do to achieve it? So, why are you waiting? Stop overthinking and giving yourself excuses. Get on with it. To achieve anything requires some planning and often some sacrifice. In financial planning, you can spend all that you have today and leave none for the future. Or we can sacrifice money we can spend today and give much more to our future selves. Your future is in your hands and you will certainly thank yourself in years to come. It is often difficult to know where to start and we've helped many families and individuals plan for their aspirational future to help them realize that what they want is certainly achievable. It will necessitate all of the aforementioned visualization, motivation, discipline, commitment, and sacrifice. But seeing their progress and journey to financial success, and indeed life success, 
is one of the most rewarding things in our line of work as wealth advisors and managers. It's not always plain sailing. Life is unpredictable and sometimes cruel. How many of us have prematurely lost a loved one to sickness or accident? How many of us know someone who is divorced? How many of us know someone who went bankrupt? The most important thing is that we are there when they fall and we help them to see the light, help them to get back on their feet and keep moving forwards. It's okay to fall, it's mostly unavoidable, but we dust ourselves off and get up on a new plan and a new direction. Overall, luck favours the prepare. And to build wealth, you need to spend your money on appreciating assets, not depreciating assets. I call it smart shopping. You need to build your balance sheet and buy assets that generate income, not generate liabilities. How you start off and how early you start has a huge effect on the final outcome. Time waits for no one. And again, to remain motivated and disciplined, you need to remain focused on the end goal. If you want it enough, you will achieve it. People tend to get what they deserve. I wish you all sweet dreams, decisive action, and a bright future ahead. Thank you for joining me on this episode. Let me know what other topics you would like to hear about in future videos. If you liked the video, smash that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode of Money Matters.